Welcome, Donald Barker here showcasing my Tortano costume. As you can see, I've got a full length white tunic with short sleeves, fringed baldric, which I just recently finished, broad belt, narrow belt material underneath, sandals, wristlets, armlets. Headband. This is what it looks like from the back. So, as you can see, the fringe baldric comes up around over the shoulder. And you see that on the uh, ancient sculptures, the three dimensional sculptures of, of the gods. Most of the poses that you that you see the Tortanos in are uh, with hands clasped. And that seems to be a, a very formal way of uh, standing when you amongst other noblemen or in the presence of the ancient Assyrian king and uh, yeah I think it's a it's a very noble it's a very noble way to, to stand. Here I'm also wearing a, a hunting shawl what, what I like to call a hunting shawl it's a short short shawl it's got cords to tie it up into, into place and the, and the cords run down you can see that they're, they're in, the, in the black cord on the, on, on the sides not only can this be a Totano's costume but if I was clean shaven I could also pull this off as a Unix costume and what I'm preparing to do right now is to make some more, some more fringe and I think it's very important to, to get fringe right uh, for ancient Assyrian costumes and to do that I've uh, spent quite a bit of time experimenting and figuring out ways uh, how they would have done it and uh, what's starting to, to appear more and more likely of a method that they would have used back in ancient Assyrian times is what they call it now the art of knots which is a macrame technique uh, taken by Europeans from, from the Middle East, whether it was from, from Turkey or Arabia is questionable. Uh, however, this is a very ancient art and has been around uh, for, for thousands and thousands of years in many, many different civilizations and cultures all across uh, the, the world. And basically what you do is you, you get your string, you tie, it, you tie it up and that's a good way for you to be able to, to measure the length of uh, fringe you'll need. So if you're going to make fringe for, for a short shawl around here, what you could do is measure, measure it with a string, the amount of, the amount of uh, string you, you'd need to go, to go all around and then lay that out between two, two posts, here I've got it between, between two chairs and then you start to start to cut your, your cords and here you can, you can see I've started placing, placing my cords in uh, different, different alternating colours and as you get along what you do is you pretty much start by stretching your string across and then cutting, cutting the, the shorter string to, to the length desired for the fringe you want and then putting them, putting them on just like, just like that one by, one by one as you can see this is a very, very slow process because I'm not trained in it 
but I can definitely see ancient Assyrian households uh, making making their own fringes and it would have been one person laying them out the other person cutting cutting the cords especially especially the women sitting sitting around the, the daughters or, or the aunties and and the, and the grandmothers uh, starting out by laying their string cutting someone else cutting the strings another person tying tying the strings on and then after they're on once you once you've got all your strings cut and, and, and they're placed what you do is you 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 measure them so that the, that they're the same before you tighten up the the knot and then tighten it up after that once once that's done you start to grab four of your of your cords and then tie a square knot and there's plenty of videos on YouTube to discuss exactly how square knots are made and and the different types of styles and, and fringes you can you can achieve using using the macrame technique and it's a it's a very it's a very beautiful beautiful way to get some uh, fringes that are identical to what you see on ancient Assyrian reliefs. Now this macrame technique or the technique of, of uh, knotting is not only used in order for you to, to, to make fringe to place on, to place on garments like, like shawls and make tassels on the, on the edges of your, of your tunic. But as you can see here, I've experimented, it's very good to make, to make strapping. So this strapping can be used as a, as a belt, it could be for, for a sword. It can, it can also be used for headbands. It can be used for all sorts of, all sorts of things. And this is a technique that looks very similar to crocheting, but it's not. Uh, what, what's actually happening is, you're just tying square knots here and, and depending on the way that you place your cords with the different colors you can get many different uh, patterns so yeah this fringe is how I made uh, this ball trick uh, you could either do it across across a piece of string or in this case I've done it over a piece of felt so if you were to grab your grab your felt and then start putting them on what will happen is you'll start to you'll start to cover up the, the felt and that would give you a nice border which which it does here. And now this this fringe baldric is ready to receive uh, the the ornamental decorations of of the rosettes uh, to be to be stitched on individually in each square. Moving moving along I've got I've got this one that I've also made. This one I didn't use the felt band. Instead, I used the string technique, and there is a there is a border of uh, of square knots, which which I've done. It's about an inch and a half wide, and and then the long fringe, which means it's just another one of these. But this is a 9th century style baldric, whereas this one is more of a Sargonic period from the from the seventh. Or, or, or eight centuries, as you can see, it's much longer. The fringe is much, much longer, and uh, you wear it the same way. So this technique is very versatile. This macrame technique not only is it for fringes on on your shawls, but as I said, you could use it for for this. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually experimenting with with, with using that that not technique to, to create those broad belts well actually you'd have your broad belt in, in bronze and then on top of that especially from the 7th, uh, 7th century and, and 8th century BC um, you start to see that the bronze broad belts were held were held into into place with a with a neck like uh, belt and here I'm creating one of those neck like belts in order to in order to wrap around and you can see the amount of the amount of uh, string cordage. This is out of jute, and the same thing. It could have been used not only to make straps. You could have made 
uh, bags with it. I also think that it's possible uh, they could have made these hunting shawls with with that technique also. I mean, you can see the the pattern that you get on on that, and that's uh, that's something that would have been could have been used as well. A technique that could have been used because the last thing you would want is if these would have been replaceable. Their purpose would have been to stop to stop the to stop the tunic from chasing up. Uh, chafing up against the the sides of the of the chariot uh, when when no one would would ride in their chariot. So this was a very important uh, item of, of clothing. I mean, instead of having to uh, remake a new a new tunic because of the chafing, I mean that's a small piece of material that could easily have been have been replaced. And here again, you see you see that multicolored multicolored trim which which was so popular in ancient Assyrian times. Uh, you can also use that yarn to create your own cordage, which I've done here. And as you can see, different, different thicknesses of, of yarn also give you a different effect. Uh, so, so in this case, I've used a thicker, a thicker type of yarn. And in this new one that I'm creating, it's a much more finer, it's a much more finer uh, thread. So thanks for joining me and don't forget to leave a comment, share, like, subscribe and uh, we'll see you all again sometime soon. Oh, and I'm just in the Syrian having fun mate.